Hello and welcome back to Theory of the Firm podcast, where we talk about all things Theory of the Firm. Today we are taking a deep dive into the book by Richard Surt and James Marsh, A Behavioral Theory of the Firm. So sit down, buckle up, let's get going. This book talks about the business firm and the way it makes economic decisions. The reason why this question ponders the authors is because the modern firm is a large, complex, and complicated organization. It operates multiple markets, multiple products, plenty of moving parts. So the main ideas of this research is to focus on a small number of key economic decisions, develop process-oriented models of the firm, link models of the firm as closely as possible, and develop a theory with generality. Put it simply, we want models that can predict actual economic decisions. Now, there is a problem with the current theory of the firm, and that is there's no agreement over what the theory actually is, how it's broken, and how to improve it. The only consensus is that the objective of the firm is to maximize revenue. So far, economists have found two major difficulties in trying to prove theory of the firm. The first one, it's the motivational assumption that maximizing the profit is the number one goal. This may not always be the case. For example, a firm may be looking at long-term sustainability, where they don't necessarily want to maximize profits now, but they want to make sure they can keep making profits over the long run. And of course, when it comes to entrepreneurs, there could be a whole range of different motivators that really drive them, including sex, saving souls, building a legacy, etc. Now, the second big problem that economists deal with is that the theory of the firm has very few characteristics that we would associate with an actual operating organization. For example, there's no complex structures, no problems of control, no budget, standard operating procedure, etc. In the book, A Behavioral Theory of the Firm, the authors discuss different viewpoints on the topic. For the most part, we see people against the classic theory of the firm, and we see people for the classic theory of the firm. Now, when it comes to those against it, The main reason is they do not believe that the theory holds water when it comes to a real life organization. For the people who defend the classical theory, they say that it's the best that we have right now. The authors discuss why none of these theories seem to fade away with time. And that answer is ambiguity. Even though new data comes out, still the question remains of what is the theory of the firm really trying to answer? This is again why the authors believe there needs to be a revised theory of the firm. Now with this new theory, the authors would like to merge classic theory of the firm and organization theory. The three main branches of organizational theory include sociology, social psychology, and administrative, which is centered on classic administrative axioms. In a nutshell, The difference between organizational theory and theory of the firm is that organizational theory is not specific from an economic standpoint. Now remember, in building this new theory, the focus is based on three criteria. Number one, the firm at its basic unit. Number two, the prediction of firm behavior when it comes to decisions of price, output, and resource allocation. And number three, emphasis on decision making as the basic research commitment. Now in building this, they see two main problems. One is determining the major attributes of decision making. The other one is identifying appropriate language to use in their revised theory. With all the questions they have at the moment, like understanding decision strategies, how external and internal factors play a part, authoritative decisions made under different conditions. They have way too many questions and not enough answers. For them to get an adequate alternative theory, they need to understand organizational goals, organizational expectations, and organizational choice. We will be right back after a word from one of our sponsors. This episode today is brought to you by the LEO program at JKU. 
Get a master's degree in leading innovative organizations here in Linz, Austria. The one-year master's degree program, Leo, provides you with the expertise to build and lead successful, innovative, and sustainable organizations. Without this lovely course, I would not have made this podcast, so thank you to the team over at Leo. Now back to the show. As we get back into it, we're going to jump all the way to chapter 7, going over a summary of basic concepts to analyze decision making in the modern firm based on variables that affect organizational goals organizational expectations, and organizational choice. The authors use four major concepts to create their new theory. The first one is quasi-resolution of conflict. What this means is an organization can only address one problem at a time. And in turn, that means they can only tend to one goal at a time. The second major concept is uncertainty avoidance. The business firm cannot avoid uncertainties, but they do everything in their power to try to avoid uncertainties. A firm will seek ways to make an uncontrollable situation controllable, mostly through policy, rules, and what they call good business practices. The third concept is problemistic search. This is when there's a problem the firm is curious about finding a solution. With this, we assume three things. Search is motivated by either the buyer or the seller. Search is simple in terms of causality. And search is biased in terms of what the organization wants to solve. And finally, the fourth concept is organizational learning. This says that organizations actually learn like humans do. They will slowly adapt in their goals in terms of what they want to accomplish at a given time. They will adapt in attention rules, where they place their attention and when, and they will adapt in their search rules. This means that if they solve a problem a certain way, when a similar problem comes back up, they're going to try to solve it the same way. And the same with the opposite. If they can't solve a problem a certain way, they're not going to try that again on a similar problem. So as we wrap up this chapter, there are some considerations. There's no start and there's no end in the process as the feedback actually creates a continuous loop. Also, this theory of the firm answers a different question than traditional theory of the firm. However, this information is believed to be useful when it comes to organizational decision-making inside of the business firm. And with that, we wanna thank you for stopping by learning more about a behavioral theory of the firm and how Richard Surt and James Murch actually created their new theory of theory of the firm. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button, get us over on Apple Podcasts, and we'll see you next time for Theory of the Firm Podcast.